Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love. Here's a little preview of what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. Today I thought we'd do another color palette challenge because uh, I'm in the mood to play. And this is from color cube number two. And I've pulled out palette 307 because I really love these colors. And I liked the project where we did the mixed charcoal, watercolor, and gouache so much that I think I'm going to do that on this project. Um, so I have pulled out moss green Holbein gouache. And I've pulled out Daniel Smith Van Dyke Brown for that brown. And because I liked that iridescent topaz so much in that collection that we did, I'm going to try this iridescent Aztec, Aztec gold um, as this kind of um, pretty tan color. I could use like a, a yellow, like I could use ochre too, something like a dark ochre. Um, and I'm going to use pale coral for this kind of peachy tone. And then I've got the charcoal out because, like I said, I had so much fun doing that on that collection that we did when we mixed all of these, that that's what I want to do is play in these again. And this might be like a new little obsession for me playing with the mixing of the different mediums because the texture and the opacities and the differences that we got, I mean, you could almost see the texture. You could almost taste it. It was just so delightful. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to do a little set of samplers because I like doing these when I'm playing with little color tests and swatches and things. And I'm just going to get out uh, my Raphael Zero mop brush. I'm using 140 pound cold press Hanamule paper. And I always have somebody ask me, is that paper wet? And no, this paper is dry. I always use dry paper. I like using watercolor paper for practically everything because it really does lend itself well to all the mediums where we're adding water. I'm going to pick some of this charcoal as I have it out here. And I'm just going to just start making some marks. And then, so this is the darkest color here that I'm pulling this dark shade of charcoal out. And then I'm going to wet this with water and let this charcoal kind of do some of its yummy textural things that it would love to do. There we go. I got water over here ready. And then I will add, um, maybe I'll get the bigger brush. You know, these mop brushes, these are mop brushes that hold a lot of water. I think that's why people ask if the paper is wet already. But if it were wet already, I would have wet it in front of you. Um, so these brushes hold a ton of water and the reason why I use dry paper most of the time is because I want the medium, the watercolor, whatever it is, to sit where I've put it. And if the paper's wet, it would keep expanding as far as it wanted to expand. It's not controllable. Whereas when I do this with a, a brush that holds a ton of water, I can control exactly where I'm pushing that color and where I want to stop and start it and it's not going to continue to spread all over that paper. And I'm doing the charcoal because, man, I loved the texture when it dried. I loved the textural difference that I got from it next to some of the other colors. Alright, so let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to start with this gouache color. That's that pale coral. And just start dipping color in and seeing what we get. And you know, a lot of times when I do these, I mention this in a lot of videos, I'm not necessarily focused on composition at this point. You know, a lot of times it helps you to relax. Like I'm talking to you, so it's not like I'm overly concentrating on the painting itself. And if you need that distraction, turn some music on and sing, um, talk to a friend, call somebody on the phone and see if you can chat for a while while you're painting um, because it kind of releases you a little bit from thinking too hard about it and overthinking decisions and getting stuck before you even get very far. Um, so talking helps me not get stuck because I'm already dividing my attention between what I'm doing and what I'm saying. And I love that because then I can 
move a little freer, go a little more free flow with some of this stuff. I don't have to worry so much. And then when I'm done, man, we get the best stuff because we didn't think about it too hard. This is that iridescent color. And I kind of like the way the iridescent colors give a little tiny bit of shine in there. And we can kind of tap that in and make a pattern and let it kind of bloom out. And we can put it beside the colors and let it spread. Um, so just experiment. And you know, composition, I'm kind of thinking, keep things off kind of to the left or to the right or to the bottom or to the top, stay out of the center um, a lot of times. And so I started my darkest mark kind of going around, but not necessarily, you know, putting things directly in the center on most of these pieces. And we'll just see, you know, when we peel this, how did that work out for us? That just seems to be what the way that I compose things because, you know, in photography, you know, you kind of compose to the rule of thirds. And so I just always have gotten used to offsetting and off centering things um, just as my own, you know, in my own work practice. Oh, I do like this little iridescent set. Oh, so yummy. These are different, aren't they? Uh, so maybe let's come back with this brown and just maybe see what is the brown going to give us. And, you know, when I do a palette challenge, I'm not trying to be 100% to what these colors were. I'm trying to work within a palette I never work in. So I just try to get close. And then I just experiment. Whatever color you like the least, use it last, which I actually really like all these colors. So I'm not avoiding any of them, but sometimes I avoid the colors. And if you're avoiding any color, use it last but definitely at least try it. Try it on one, and if you're like, okay, I definitely don't like that, and you know for sure, um, okay, then go ahead and don't use it, but at least try it. You don't know how many times that we're doing these, and I'm shocked at the end result when we're done, um, and I wouldn't have gotten there if I hadn't been brave. Be brave, tell yourself, that's my mantra, be brave. Um, I wouldn't have got there if I hadn't said, okay, I'm determined to at least use it a little bit. Look at that. Whoa, these are, <laughs> I'm actually kind of digging these colors and I'm so glad a lot of times that, um, that I filmed these because I don't remember later what I did. Like I look at a piece and I'm like, how did I even do that? And at least now if there's something I really, really love, I can go back and check the video too. <laughs> So bonus. Now with this last one, I'm just going back in and kind of filling in some areas and just seeing like if I tap this in a little bit, how will it bloom and dry? And then we'll just see what, what, how did we do? I mean, so far I'm, I'm digging these. This is pretty darn cool. I'm really, this is completely different too than some of these other color palettes that we've done. But oh, I can see revisiting several of the ones I've done lately. And you know, these mediums where I'm mix mixing the gouache and like the charcoal. And you know, as we're talking about that, that was charcoal. But as I added water, I put brown in that. As I added water to that charcoal and kind of snuffed that down, it's no longer uh, powdery. So, you know, if you don't want to put a finish spray on top, you could probably get away with not having a finish spray on top of those um, when you have mixed them down in there with the, with the water like that. But if I was going to finish it, I would use that Sennelier Soft Pastel Fixative if I needed to. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't fix everything I like down. I sometimes I just go ahead and put it in an art sleeve to protect it and doesn't necessarily need uh, a spray on it. Just my own preference. All right, so these are super, super cool. I think we're gonna let this dry and then mark make on top of it. So I'll be back. All right, we're dry here and I wanna do some mark making. And if I didn't tell you what that brush was that I changed over to, that was my Princeton Neptune Quill number four. And I think even though I didn't want to use soft pastels, I'm going to use them because the colors and the texture are so good. And I really feel like that's what I want on here. And even though I was kind of, kind of not using them. And these are half sticks, Sennelier half sticks. Um, I got like a big box of them at one time and I just always use those. Um, the texture that 
those kind of add to what we already have going on here it just looks amazing so I think I'm gonna do it you could you could use whatever you got on hand though you don't have to do what I do you can definitely just pick your colors from all the materials you have on hand that's exactly what I'm doing I'm playing with what I already have here in my art room when I do these and so just kind of looking at you know my colors seeing kind of how we did already and what else might we want to add to the top of this and do we want to add any metallics on top of it I'm kind of not feeling that today I know that's a shocker <laughs> I'm kind of thinking you know maybe one of these this kind of fits right in with that color there and just just jump in and get started maybe I want some lines maybe I want a pattern maybe you want to glue stuff on top if you like collage all kinds of stuff you could do here kind of digging this salmony color right here too um, and I think I just spotted one that kind of fits in there it's a little bit brighter but it kind of still fits in with like my little gouache colors here I like it all right so let's just do it let's just jump in dang these are so pretty look at how pretty these are what what do we want to do here Ooh, I don't know what do I want to do now I'm like Whoa. if you ever get to this point you're just like stuck set it to the side and live with it for a while and you could also make a color copy of this and play on the copies um, that's something else that I like to recommend to people because then you can practice as much as you want to practice and you don't get stuck because it's a practice piece it's not the real piece all right so I'm just going to do something a little different on each one of these see I could definitely do these with the neo color 2 pastels but man for some reason I'm obsessed with soft pastels maybe it's because they're messy um, I'm like I need it see and I really like these little swirly circles lately just my own personal preference there and I don't like it to be perfect so I'm kind of was kind of moving those around a little bit as I went and off the frame I like it when things kind of continue off the frame and in your imagination you're like ooh, what's going on there look at that color <laughs> might be a tad brighter than my inspiration photo but that's okay I'm just trying to for the most part work within a color palette it doesn't have to be perfect okay might not love that one but I might love it you never know I just just kind of going with the flow set it down and just commit I mean that could be a good way to make yourself do it just be like Broom! okay right there it is and don't even like think too hard about where you set it just kind of almost like a blind throwdown <laughs> an art throwdown a blind art throwdown and then you're like all right we're committed see now I'm blah, right there okay <laughs> there we go all right I'm kind of digging that let's see kind of feel like I could use a little now with this being on the edges here of that tape as soon as I pull that tape I'm gonna throw powder everywhere so this is an instance where I'm definitely going to have to say spray this with the spray uh, fixative before I peel the tape so that's gonna be the goal to spray it before we peel the tape and then we might just look at it and think does it have everything that it needs do we need anything else do we want um, maybe you know like a touch of black got some India ink up here we could try some India ink with a dip pen and just oh you know we could do we could I'm gonna do a dip pen um, we could do though I'm gonna use my brass nib um, I have discovered too with the black with the brass nib um, especially with the gold Ooh. Whoa, oh my goodness look at that did we commit or what <laughs> 
especially with the gold, I have figured out that if the ink starts to get thick, and you know it gets thick if you leave it open as you're using it, um, then it doesn't flow off of the pen nearly as easy as it did when my nib was say like new. And it's not the nib's fault, the ink is too thick. Okay, so that was a little crazy. I don't know. Do we like that or do we want to try something else? So I'm almost thinking that we could try something else on one of these other ones. I've got lots of options. I've got Posca pins back here. Um, I got white Posca pin. Maybe we wanted white instead of black. Just trying to give you some ideas. Do I like that though? Maybe I liked it. Maybe I want to do, oh, maybe I want to do pencil and get some pencil scribble in there. That's not going to be quite as dramatic as that. And I will say too, if you're trying something and you're not sure, do it on the least favorite one. This is why I do like six or eight or 12 at a time, because then you'll have a few that are duds. You'll have a few that are like uh, amazing. Like I'm feeling like this one could be amazing. And then you can just decide, okay, I tried that and I didn't like it. And so that one doesn't have to be like your bad art day because now you had like five or six or 12 more that you did instead. I'm kind of liking this. All right, and then too, you know, I go through phases of lots and I go through phases of minimal. And so you don't have to cover every edge. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is tap off. I don't ever, I try not to blow the powder. So any powder like this, I tap it off. If I need to blow it, we take it outside to blow it. because this will contaminate your work area and you'll have this color appear on every piece of art that you do going forward. So I try not to contaminate my workspaces. They do get contaminated, but I try not to. And then this stuff, I basically hold it like 12 or 15 inches above the piece of paper, spray it. And the only reason why I'm doing this on my art table is so I can film it because people are like, we want to see you do that. Um, but I normally would take this outside because this stuff does stink and there's a fan on here in this room you can open a window but it is better if you just take it outside and real thin you don't hold this down and soak any part of that paper it does not reactivate wet medium it's very thin layer that then dries and then you may do two or three layers one layer uh, might just kind of get it down but looking like a second layer definitely will make sure but the one thing I will warn you using sprays on your piece of art might darken the piece down. So that might be a shade darker. When it dries, it might lighten up. It might not lighten up. Just really depends. And then we're gonna let that dry and then we'll peel that tape and see what we got today. Cause I'm kind of excited. I like the texture. I can feel the texture. Um, I don't know, like in this one right here, like you can just visually see the different elements, the opacity differences in the gouache and the watercolor, the textures that it gives you with the charcoal versus that gouache versus that watercolor versus that pastel. I love it when you mix the mediums and they give you that much juicy texture elements. And then, you know, it doesn't take a long time to dry. We will try to peel this without getting powder all over the place because it's still, you can still have powder come up. So it might even be easier if we're on a tilt. <sighs> Taking some of this off, which that might be the reason why, you know, maybe you hate to work with pastels. And man, I do hate that they get everywhere, but <sighs> more than anything, I love the colors and the texture difference that it gives you. And then I'm gonna cut these apart and then we can take a look at them. I'm actually super excited already. And now I can see like if, uh, if there's any that I really, really love. Now I have some good choices for maybe a larger piece of abstract art. Like these could be inspiration for larger pieces. I like making small pieces though when I'm testing colors and doing samplers because if you hated it, you don't have something big that you now have to 
do something with. And if you loved it, you can always make bigger stuff with it. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so I didn't love the black on that one, so not my favorite. This one, I'm a love loving. Okay, it goes this way. All right, that one, super good, good one. Okay, this one, I think this is my very favorite of the day. And you can see how if you do multiple ones of them, one could make the whole day a good painting day. I love this one. This, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging that, and I like how you can see the pencil in there. You could come back with some gold on top. Okay, this one, second favorite one of the day. Definitely loving that. Do I like it better any other direction? We can turn it all around and take a look. I like it this way. Ha <laughs> ha! Two good ones. This one, I like the pencil mark again that I've got kind of in there, um, and I like it quite a bit. So there we go. So I'd say one dud. I didn't like what the black did. And five that are good and two that are great. And here's our inspiration color palette. So how do we do? Can't wait to see what you do with these colors. And they were dark green, black, coffee, clay, and terracotta, if you're wanting to see those colors. So I can't wait to see what you're making. Definitely tag me on Instagram if you want, at Two Little Owls Art. Um, or you can join the Facebook group I have for Art Peeps. I'll link all that down below, along with the different supplies that I was using. And I'll see you next time.